Welcome to a video on procedural generation in Twine. This video covers passage manipulation. There are many different ways to approach procedural generation of content in Twine. This example covers adding and changing passages as a method to generate content. This example also uses Sugarcube 2.21.0 story format. So as we see here, we have a link to a passage map. Click it. We have three locations, YH, YY, AK. Uh, let's go to the last one, go back to map, choose another one, go back to map, choose another one, go back to map. Not a lot happening, but we have some different locations and we can go to them and come back to this map. Well, let's go over to the story map view. As we can see here, there's something very strange going on. Those passages we were just looking at, they don't exist, or at least they don't exist yet. Two different major things are happening in this example. The first of which, there's code to add passages at runtime, and there's code to change passages at one at runtime. Let's start with adding passages. In the add passage passage, I've created a widget called add passage. Within this is a script macro running a whole bunch of different JavaScript here. Now, this example and its functionality depends on knowing how Sugarcube constructs Twine stories. The first of which is that it stores all of the passages within TW story data element. That is, TW story data is an element that contains all of the passages as their own HTML elements. Each passage within the story data area is called passage data. So we have a HTML element that contains children, it's children or TW passage data. During runtime, Sugarcube looks at all of these, composes a copy of that within its own memory, and then uses the combination of the two, both the HTML elements that contain the text of the passage and its data references, to run different things during the story. So to understand then, Sugarcube has, when we look at a Twine story, two different copies of a, of a, pa of a Twine story basically within memory. It's example within memory JavaScript and it's pointing to the corresponding HTML. Understanding that then, we can add new passages as long as we touch both of these. So we need to add new HTML elements that contain the text and update the references in the JavaScript memory so that Sugarcube understands, or at least we can fake it understanding, that there are new, the new passages that didn't exist before previously running. This allows us to change things in runtime by understanding how these connections work. So the very first thing we're doing then is getting a reference to the storage area, TW story data. We're using jQuery to do this. So we're saving a reference to story storage. Then we're getting the number of passages. This is important because all passages have a passage ID, a PID. So we need to know how many current passages exist. We update that number and then all passages we add always have a current update. So we go ahead and get the number of these, number of children and the story data with TW passage data. So all the existing passages, we add one to that and that will be the new number. Down here we're creating a new TW passage data HTML element. This is where the content of passages are being stored. So we're creating a new one of these, we're updating with the new passage ID that we just got right here, and we're setting its name to whatever we're passing this widget. So arguments one, and because this isn't a, because this is JavaScript and we can't use the normal variable IDs, state variables, args zero, the first argument passed to the widget. Finally, position and size, we don't really care about because those actually correspond to the editor and the passages didn't exist in the editor, so we can just set them to default, 100 and 100 each time. Next, we can update the text of this, again using jQuery, as the next argument. So the first one is the name of the new passage, the second one is whatever content to add to that passage. Then we're appending it to story data. So we're creating this new element, we're adding a new passage ID, we're giving it a name, then we're adding it to the storage data. Well, that's only part of the, the problem. Remember I said it exists in two different places. So the first thing we did is we added a new HTML element to the existing story data. Now we need to go update the references within the JavaScript code during runtime. So now that we've appended a new passage, now we have to go mess with the references a little bit. So we're going to refine that we just added by name. 
Notice we updated the name up here to be whatever arguments we passed to it, the first one. Go refine that again, get elements by name, very first one. Then we're going to create a new object. This requires more detailed information about how Sugarcube handles things. This is an internal passage object, but because we don't know how Sugarcube handles things, we're going to fake it. So we're going to assume everything it thinks passage objects should have. We have excerpt, classes, element, reference here, as well as its ID, following the same rules established. Dome ID, passage, hyphen, name, replaced with any spaces to hyphens and back to lowercase, its title, its tags, and the most important thing, this right here. In JavaScript, because it's not strictly an object-oriented programming language, it's a prototypical language, we can create inheritance, or at least fake inheritance, by binding the prototype of one object to the prototype of another. In other words, we can fake things. And so what this does is sets this new object we've just created, new passage, to be a prototype of the same prototype of passage objects. So because we don't need to know under we don't need to understand how Sugarcube handles things, we can simply fake it here, create a new object with the same properties passage object expects, then bind its prototypes together, basically Frankensteining this by joining these bodies and code together. Finally, we add it to story passages, which the internal references to all of the story objects and story passages and corresponding elements within a story. And now we have the total add passage code. So we're creating a new HTML element, we're adding it to the story data, then we're going into the references and we're basically faking new references to that. And so Sugarcube doesn't know the difference then between ones that existed in the story previous to its running and those we've now added to it because we're faking passage objects as well as adding those same references and through this entire process, these two, these two processes of updating HTML and changing to JavaScript, we can add new passages. So the other thing I mentioned that's going on here is the ability to change passages. That's actually far simpler. And we see change passage widget here. So we find the passage in the storage and we change it. Because we know passages in storage can be referenced by its name, then we first argument we pass to it is the name the second argument we pass to it is the internal text to change. Notice this is using the run macro. We can add variable names in the run macro because it will be translated similar to the set macro. So it will substitute the names of the variables. This was different than how we were using the script macro and the add passage because those won't have the same substitution. Well, those are our two main functionalities going on here. We can add passages and we can change the content of existing passages once they exist. Let's go over to the start passage. We saw this example text that I read at the top. We see the use of the silently macro to condense all of the white space here and ignore any output. And we see a handful of different other things going on here. We're setting number of loops to a random number three to six. We have a array of vowels, array of consonants, and empty array locations. So then we're generating those same locations we saw random letter combinations of vowel and consonant. Setting a temporary variable vowel to a random entry in the vowels array using an array function that's part of Sugarcube, using a random function that's again part of this, so getting a random vowel, getting a random consonant. Then we're using push unique, which is a function that Sugarcube has for arrays to make sure we're only adding unique entries so we don't get repeats of like YYYY or YH or things like that. These are all unique locations. Then we're now creating a map passage, we're setting links to the content of this, which is locations. Then we're, and because we're adding this HTML, going ahead and using break rule, we're building all of the locations by whatever number we set it to. So we run an initial loop, creating all these locations. Then we run another loop on those locations to build the content of the map passage we just created. We update the map passage with those links. So now we have a passage map we're creating. We're updating it with all the links we previously generated. Then we're creating all of the new content and those same passages. So we're sitting now in the location and a link back to map. Then we're adding that passage with its new content. And then finally, we have a link to the passage map, 
which as we see doesn't exist but it's getting generated mid passage here at add passage but as far as sugarcube understands all of this exists because by the time it gets to it to link out to it it does exist it just doesn't exist when the story starts these are two different approaches here again adding and changing passages that required sort of detailed knowledge of how sugarcube understands these again remembering that Passages are within the story data of the HTML document. They are within passage data, TW passage data. And so we can add those, adding passage data elements with its content to the story data. Secondly, we can change the internal references by building new objects with the expectations of what a passage object should look like. We can bind the prototypes together by making that new object have the same prototype as a normal passage object, effectively making it a passage object without knowing how they originally work. Finally, we can use these two different widgets, add and change, to build a complex new story within Twine here using macro functionality, a little bit of JavaScript and jQuery to dynamically build a story, procedurally generate a story that is within Twine without actually needing passages at all. We can do it entirely within code here. This has been a review of how to do passage manipulation within procedural generation in Twine. This code example can be found in the description of this YouTube video, as well as a proof copy of the same code. Thanks for watching.